Yeah, good morning students. Today's lecture will be basically on Buddhist architecture in India. Buddhism, as you all know, is a religion which had basically originated in India, close to India in Nepal. Okay, Lord Gautam Buddha was born at Lumbini and he was Lumbini and he was the prince, Prince Siddhartha of the royal kingdom of Kapila Vastu, which is nowadays located in India's neighboring country called Nepal. So most of the prominent Buddhist structures okay, are spread all across India. Apart from India, the first and the most fundamental of ever, uh, apart from India, uh, we can also say that Buddhism has spread its wings in China, in Japan, in most of the Southeast Asian countries, like in Southeast Asian countries, like, uh, Mong uh, like Mongolia, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and apart from Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei, most of the countries of Southeast Asia are predominantly Buddhist. So Buddhist populations are also seen in the countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Timor, uh, Philippines, etc. So in any place if you go in these countries, you will come across Buddhist architectural designs and sites. The main funda of Buddhist architecture is the stupa. Stupas are basically the burial mounds of the great leaders, the ritual leaders, the monks, okay, of, uh, of, the, of Lord Buddha, etc. The first and most fundamental of Buddhist architectural monuments, the Buddhist stupa, serves as a marker for a sacred space, a symbolic representation of Lord Buddha's burial mound, M-O-U-N-D. To understand the stupas and pagodas, people from different parts of the world, people from different walks of life, they visit the famous Buddhist temples and the stupas located in Angkor Wat in Cambodia, then Thailand, they go to Myanmar, Indonesia, China, Japan, and even come to India to uh, different places which are visited by Buddhist monks from time to time. Places like Nalanda in Bihar, Rasgir in Bihar, then it is called uh, Bodh Gaya also in Bihar. People go to Dharamsala in Himachal Pradesh. People go to Bomdila and Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. People go to the Rumtek Monastery in Ladakh. People, uh, people go to the, uh, what is called Rumtek Monastery in Sikkim. People go to Ladakh and also in the neighboring countries like Bhutan and Nepal as well as Sri Lanka, Ceylon happens to be the prominent promoters of Buddhist culture, concept, structure and architecture okay, in a global forum. Okay, right now I would like to discuss about some of the major attractions of Buddhist architecture found in the country. In India, the most prominent Buddhist structure that is located in India is basically in the, in the township of Sansi, located in the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh. Sansi is 110 kilometers from Bhopal and it is the site of the great stupa at Sansi which is one of the most important Buddhist monuments reflecting the same of Buddhist art and architecture. This stupa is the oldest stone structure in India which was built during the Mauryan period. Originally, its work was commissioned in the 3rd century BC by Emperor Ashoka who was the pioneer and the founder of the Mauryan Empire okay? and he had ruled India from 332 uh, sorry, 232 BC, uh, uh, he had ruled India for 36 years from 268 BC to 232 BC. He was one of the ardent followers of Buddhism and he had even sent his daughter Sanghamitra to Sri Lanka to spread Buddhism. After the Battle of Kalinga, which he had fought in the year 261 BC and he saw the enormous ravages which took place, the destruction of life and property, he sends his mindset and fully devoted and dedicated towards the spread of Buddhism and towards peace. So right now if you talk about the Sansi Stupa, okay, it is 12.28 feet high, consists of central chamber where relics of Lord Buddha are placed. There are four ornamental gateways facing the four directions namely north, south, east and west and a balustrade surrounding the stupa which was added in the 1st century BC. The Sansi stupa in India is a typical example of Buddhist art and architecture and it is a stupa, in a stupa style and an excellent illustration of the development of 
Buddhism art and sculpture in the country starting from the 3rd century BC. And this process continued up to the 12th century AD when the Sanse Stupa was able to attract visitors from different parts of the world even during that time. People used to flock from different parts of the world, people from different walks of life, they used to come visit these places basically for religious purpose, basically for on pilgrimages, basically to come and spend the leisure and pleasure time, okay, watching, watching and knowing more about the teachings of Buddha and spending time in the salubrious environment located in and around the Sansi Stupa. So pilgrimage tours or religious tourism started even from that time and it has, it has just reached its zenith or a climax by this time now. The, uh, the Sansi Stupa became an UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1989. It has earned the World Heritage Site status from UNESCO. UNESCO basically stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. It is an organ of the United Nations and it came to bestow upon the Sansi Stupa, the World Heritage Site, and it is considered to be one of the best conserved ancient stupas of Central India. The foundation of the Buddhist Bihara of Sansi includes the great Sansi Stupa and it was laid by one of the greatest Indian emperors of the, of, of, in history, Ashoka the Great. He commissioned the construction of the Stupa here after redistributing the mortal remains of Lord Buddha so that several such Stupas can be built. The present hemisphere edifice is double in chamber of the original brick structure and it was built by Ashoka. A chatra that is an umbrella or like structure made of stone crowned the hemispherical brick structure which is surrounded by wooden railing. Queen Devi, who was the wife of Ashoka and a daughter of Marcent of Vidisha, who was born in Sanshi, had supervised the construction of the monument. A sandstone pillar inscribed with sizim edict by Ashoka was also ornate with spiral Brahmi characters. Nowadays, now I would like to conclude my discussion by saying that Buddhism or Buddhist architecture had played a prominent role in the establishment of different prominent structures in the country, in India. And anywhere you go, you go to Sansi, you go to Nalanda, you go to Taxila, which is nowadays in present day in Pakistan, you go to Ladakh, you go to Dharamsala, you go to Arunachal Pradesh even different parts of Sikkim, okay, and even our neighboring country of, countries of Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bhutan are testimony to the different varieties of Buddhist art, uh, art and architecture which had ruled the roost around that time. Buddhist architecture and style has got its unique way of actually catering to the needs of the time. The intricate designs, the fine intricacies, the fine nuances, the intricate designs and the beauty and the sublimity offered by the Buddhist style of architecture not only added to the grandeur and splendor of the place but also was able to soothe the ailing mind and in that way was able to attract more and more pilgrims, pilgrims and religious tourists to the place not only in search of peace and harmony but also to gather more and more knowledge about Buddhism about the preachings and sermons of the Buddha, about the teachings of Buddha as embodied through the Zataka tales and also through the religious scriptures of the Buddha or Buddhism as seen or experienced through the Tripitakas. Therefore, Buddhist style of architecture contributes towards the tourism scenario in India to an enormous extent and it is because of the rich ordeal, because of the rich, uh, richness found in the Buddhist style of architecture, the Indian tourism has gone up higher by a few notches till then. This is, this is for your kind information. Thank you for today.